we call Celebrity Row, the display B-52H, stored right here. Uh, we have uh, 11 others stored behind it. Uh, We're using it today. And the youngest one is like way over the 50 years old. So they're, they're getting a lot of use out of the B-52s. So the H model is the only one flying. And uh, they they are conventional, and um, they uh, they're they're used around the military for other purposes, like carrying light cargo loads and people and so forth. The Marines, and they also carry uh, uh, weapons in case they have to attack a submarine. So this is an aircraft that the Navy started flying in the 70s, and uh, described by the numbers. Um, it came out around 1970. Uh, the pilot sits 35 of the helicopters. There's a seating area for like 75 troops. So it's a great cargo plane. Uh, they built about 130 of these, and they're retiring most of the older A models. We have a lot of A models out here. Like advanced jet trainers, still very much in use. It's been came out in the 60s, and the Air Force is still using it today. 70s. Now uh, this is still today. The C model is the current fighter interceptor version that the Air Force is flying, um, and they're also flying a newer version called the E, the F-15E or Strike Eagle, which has started the process of regenerating them so they can be turned into full-scale aerial targets or target drones and uh, they regenerated them here and then it may um, I don't know if they did the cut they did the conversion to target drone here or elsewhere but uh, they did that over a period of 10 or 15 years and okay so I'm going to go back to the right now that little jet here is the A4 Skyhawk this is a uh, single engine subsonic ground attack plane flown by the Navy and the Marines from the 60s to the 90s the A used as an advanced jet trainer for a number of years now the next two planes here are both F-14 Tomcats the F-14 is a twin-engine supersonic Navy fighter interceptor. Uh, later, uh, missiles and aircraft uh, with an airborne laser. Uh, they use chemical labor, uh, sorry, if use uh, with the background glare of the plane itself. Maybe they didn't make this before they were shooting it actually at a missile. It maybe gets their F-35C. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how long they keep it, but it's still a very important aircraft for the Navy. Uh, this is C-130. Uh, its primary reason for being here is that it has a purple heart. It's kind of a uh, damaged an engine and broke off part of a wing. But they patched it back up and continued to fly it for another 30 years. They just had to periodically replace the duct tape that was holding the wing on. Very rugged aircraft. So the twin engine turboprop, kind of a business type aircraft uh, that was outfitted with an uh, A6 nose. So that it could train A6 bombardier navigators. And they could train about a half a dozen at a time in here instead of training them individually. And those are A10s flying up there, if you can see those. Um, so it's the C-130 cargo plane, or a new plane, new cargo plane that would be short takeoff and landing, or stories. And they replace it with a newer turboprop called the T-6 Texan II, which the Air Force is also using. And this one, and it, uh, if you look at the paint scheme, you'll see it's not a typical Navy shipboard paint scheme. This was in the movie, they had a jungle camouflage, but um, this one has more of a desert camouflage. But in any case, for our fair mission, uh, so the mission, and they always see all the bumps and protrusions on the outside, all the metal stuff and antennas and stuff. To replay, or the Marines use it for air assault for a troop carrying ship. And they recently retired all canister, uh, take out the, uh, the uh, air and fill it with nitrogen. And that preserves them somewhat indefinitely. Uh, others, it seems like they don't have a canister that size and they just put a lot of extra spray lat around it. But, um, so they uh, like to retain the engine uh, in case they're ever needed again. And a little ways up here you'll see some engines that uh, are just... Uh, but um, these, are the, these are candidates to become target drones, full-scale aerial targets. There's a contract now. Now that they finished up all the F-4s and they finished using them as well, they're now working on F-16s, uh, turning them into target drones. It could be, could be just undergoing a uh, contract order serv service. And you know, so they might be available for a museum. Look to the left of this road, just on the left. In the front row, we have the body of an F-100, and then behind it, we have a uh, F-111. Those are the only two of those we have out here. And then there's some Titan and Thor missile sections here going around here. So even if they had a museum that wanted some of these airplanes, they'd take a lot of work. But a lot of the parts already removed. And after we pass this one, we're just going to slow down a bit, and you'll see behind it, you may have seen it already, behind it, in the row behind it, there's a, a plane, uh, that's the WB-57 with the long, long wings. See that? That's a, you have to hold it up with the pallets uh, that uh, NASA is flying three of now that they uh, use for high-altitude environmental research and photographing uh, eclipses. Doesn't that look kind of spooky? Kind of like a U-2 or something? Anyway. The one, the, I just saw a glimpse of the one on TV, just kind of a part of it. It was so shiny, I thought, wow. Anyway, um, 
there's probably a picture online of them. So, not sure how many they're going to keep. Now, after the last F4 here, if you look down the end of the row, there's kind of a road here. Straight down, after behind the crane there, uh, straight down there, uh, looking down there, you'll see the last few F-14s. There's about five of them now, I don't know. Uh, we have B-1Bs, uh, who are making the parts available to the uh, 60 or so they are still flying. Well, you get a good look at it here. If you look um, after the B-1Bs, you see the row of F-18s. Look at the number seven Blue Angel with a half, with just his tail section there. <laughs> Doesn't that look funny? They chopped that in half and took the front half somewhere to serve as a simulator or something. I forget what they, I don't know what they actually did with it, but they left the, the tail end of number seven here. It's kind of pitiful, but anyway. Which I would guess are being used for the super galaxies, since that's mostly what they're flying now. to uh, an area up here where we see the B-52. So the B-52s, when they started cutting them up under the start treaties, they started out with a 13,000-pound uh, guillotine, dropped it from a crane, chopped off both wings, then chopped the fuselage into three sections. Uh, but they found out they were destroying parts, the landing Marine Corps attack jet, uh, the V-Stall uh, jet that they fly. Uh, they've been flying it since uh, the 80s. And they're still using them. They have about 130 of them that they're still flying, and uh, they're flying. They're flying them. They're flying the heck out of them. So <laughs> they haven't retired any. Uh, but uh, there's one up here that we can look at. So more F-16s. So we got helicopters. More uh, helicopters. Then we had some F-16s. And a little ways up, you'll see kind of a green airplane that's an A-7. And next to it, the pointy nose one with its nose on a pallet there. That's a Harrier. It looks like it has training wheels. It's the one Harrier we have out here. Now we did we did buy a bunch of Harrier bodies from the British when they retired theirs. So they're hidden over there behind the, uh, the P. A lot of them D's with X's on them, so there's a lot of planes that have been out here a long time that now they're starting to decide it's time for them to go. Those all have D's. This one is an F4. Yeah, this is half taken apart already. And these are these would be nice for a civilian pilot to have these little... Uh, so these are P3s we're we'll looking at the tail end of. Get a good look at the tail there. Let's see them thirties. 